At this point, let's jump into the bigger picture charts and see what we can expect for the upcoming week. So looking at the S&P daily chart, you can see that the buy side regained control. We had a failed breakdown attempt on Wednesday, which fully recovered by the next day. And then once we took out the 65 to 66 area in the overnight session, that served as a bullish confirmation and it completely invalidated the breakdown attempt. From there, we saw a move up into the all-time high and the S&P ended up making a fresh all-time high on Friday. Now heading into the overnight session and heading into Monday, we'll be watching to see if that bullishness can now continue. So if the S&P is holding above the 74 to 76 area, that would tell you that the S&P is quite strong and the buyers are in firm control and that can lead to a push to a fresh all-time high. Below that, we still have support around 72 half and then better support around 68 to 70 half. So 68 to 70 half is really going to be a key spot for us. As long as buyers are holding ES above that area, there's still potential to retest the 77 quarter previous all-time high and then the new all-time high at 8075 and then from there even push to fresh all-time highs yet again. If we fail at 68 to 70, then that's a bit of a warning sign because then the breakout from Friday starts to come into question. Below that, we have support at 61.75 to 63.75, and that's still a spot where buyers can defend. If we take out 61.75 to 63.75, then the breakout from Friday becomes completely invalidated, and from there, we can go down into 55.5 to 57.5, and eventually even down towards 49 to 51 half. So right now, short term, we want to see that breakout from Friday actually holding if buyers are going to continue to remain in control. So if the market is really strong, it can hold 74 to 76. But even if we saw a pullback towards 68 to 70 half, and as long as that area was holding, buyers could still maintain control and we could still consolidate and then eventually head higher. So if we look at the last three days, you can see that the S&P has gone from roughly 41.42 to a fresh all-time high. So it is a bit exhausted, and it would be very normal for the market to balance here a bit before it pushes again to fresh all-time highs. But overall, the pattern is fairly bullish, and as long as we're holding 68 to 70, or especially some of the more aggressive areas of support, like 72 half or 74 to 76, the buy side can maintain control, we can consolidate a bit up here, and then break to fresh all-time highs yet again. Now, moving on to the Russell, we can see that Russell has not really participated to the same extent as the S&P. So ideally, heading into the upcoming week, we want to see the Russell break out beyond 1508.2 to 1510.2. Those are high volume nodes in the current balance, and if we can see a breakout above that area, then it would open the door for the Russell to test its own all-time high at 1517 to 1518. And on the downside, we don't want to see TF really cracking back below that 1501 to 1503 area. That would be a warning sign for the buyers in the S&P. And at the very minimum, it could limit the upside in the S&P. So the ideal situation now, if buyers are to maintain control in S&P and NASDAQ, is for the Russell to begin participating in the upside move and break out beyond 1508.2 to 1510.2. If we can take that area out, then we have some minor resistance around 1514, and then we have the all-time high around 1517 to 1518. And we know that when the Russell starts to catch up to the other markets, it can do so pretty rapidly. So heading into Monday and Tuesday, even if the S&P and NASDAQ are just consolidating at their highs, there would still be potential for the Russell to put in a stronger upside move and catch up to the other markets by heading higher into 1514 and 1517 to 1518. And from there, it could even push to a fresh all-time high, given that the S&P and NASDAQ have already done so. So short term, we're going to keep an eye on 1508.2 to 1510.2, anticipating a breakout of that zone, given the bullishness in the other markets. And in the event that we see a strong rejection and failure, at this 08.2 to 10.2 area, then we'll need to reassess the situation even in the S&P. And then below the 1501 area, we have support around 1491 half to 1492 half, followed by 1478 half to 1482, 
and those are still areas where responsive buyers can be active in the Russell. Now let's move on to NASDAQ. So NASDAQ's really the one that's leading over here. We saw a major breakout on Friday, and at this point we have bullish time frame alignment in NQ. The major area of support that NASDAQ needs to maintain now is at 61.24 to 61.34. As long as NQ is holding above that area, this recent breakout to fresh all-time highs can remain intact. But given the strength that we saw on Friday and the fact that we now have bullish time frame alignment in NASDAQ, ideally we only get a minor pullback and then we continue to make fresh all-time highs in NQ. On the downside, if we fail to hold 61.24 to 61.34, that would be a warning sign for buyers. And from there, we could head lower into 60.90 to 61.100. And then we have that major high volume node at 60.73. So right now, short term, the main question is if the breakout from Friday is going to remain intact. And if it is, then ideally we only get a minor retracement and then we push to fresh all-time highs because at this point we do have bullish time frame alignment in NASDAQ. And the main inflection point is 61.24 to 61.34. So that is how NQ is set up. Now, last but not least, let's jump into the crude oil market. So crude put in an upside breakout on Friday as well, but now it is running into that larger time frame resistance that I've been talking about for the last two to three weeks. So now crude oil is running into the big balance that it broke down from. So this entire balance from roughly 54 quarter all the way up towards 59 half is going to be a major area of resistance. Now the further into the balance it pushes, the stronger the resistance it's going to be running into. So we have a major high volume node at 5606. We have this important swing high around 5592. So that entire area from roughly 5590 all the way up towards roughly 57 half is going to be major resistance in crude oil. And it's very unlikely that crude will take that area out on first test. So in the event that crude oil pushes higher into this balance, we could see a pretty swift rejection around 55.92 all the way up towards the 57.60, 57.70 area. So that is a significant area of resistance and the expectation would be for responsive sellers to be active there for a push back down towards 52.86 to 53, which marks the breakout area from Friday. So heading into the upcoming week, we know that there's short-term support in crude at 52.86. That's the breakout spot. Below that, we have support at 51.91 up to 52.30. That marks the launching point of the directional move. And we also have a high volume node at 52.17. So there's some decent support at 51.91 to roughly 52.30. And buyers can be active there even if the short term breakout ends up failing. The more likely scenario is that we'll get some balancing above 52.86. So that means that we could see crude oil push a bit higher into this large range and balance that it broke down from, but then sellers step in and we end up establishing a new trading range kind of like this. So we can then balance in this range. So heading into the upcoming week, we just have to understand that there is resistance now around 54 quarter on the downside, the 52.86 to 53 area is short-term support. It marks the breakout spot. And then we have the launching point of the breakout at 52 quarter. If you take out the 51.91 to 52 quarter area, then Friday's breakout attempt becomes completely invalidated. And then from there, we could return back down towards 50.90 and the big high volume node at 50.44 where buyers can be active. And then if that weakness continues, perhaps we revisit the recent balance area low around the 49.32 to 49.77 area. So that's how crude oil is set up heading into the upcoming week. Given Friday's breakout, we could see a bit of follow through but we have to understand that even though we're seeing short-term strength in crude oil, as it pushes higher, it will be running into some major resistance as it approaches the 56 to 57 area. And that is a high probability area for sellers to be active first time up. And we could see a pretty swift rejection from that area back down towards 53 to 54. So that is how crude oil is set up. And that wraps up this week's video. I hope you all had a great week in the markets. Enjoy your weekend and good trading in the week ahead.